What if I told you that Microsoft's 25% AI generated code and Google's 30% AI written code base might be quietly destroying their performance? What happens when some startups are trying to run 95% of AI generated code without anyone checking if it actually works? So here's where the data that really shocked me. CodeFlash analyzed 100,000 open source functions and found that 62% of AI generated code contains bugs that would break or slow down your system. Even worse, 90% of AI optimization either introduce errors or makes your code slower. So while everyone's rushing to replace developers with AI, who's actually gonna catch these performance disasters before they crash your production system? So let's dive into some of this today. Welcome to Startup Hack, I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Hack, we train software developers in our coding boot camps as well as build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, today we're diving into something that should terrify every CTO, the hidden performance crisis that's brewing as companies bet their future on AI-generated code. The numbers don't lie, they're worse than anyone even expected. So. CodeFlash presented a devastating findings at the at a recent conference, right? AI struggles massively when writing performant code. Their analysis of 100,000 open source functions revealed that 62% of AI generated optimizations would introduce bugs if developers accepted, accepted them outright. Now the remaining 38% that were technically correct, 73% provided less than 5% of a performance improvement for like this trade-off of the complexity, co complexity of code or they actually made the code slower. So that means that 90% of AI code suggestions are either broken or useless for performance. However, companies are still building their future on this technology. Now, I'm not against AI. Let me just preface this right from the start. It just needs to be learned to use responsibly. You wouldn't just take your car and let it drive itself. I know, that's an Elon Musk reference. I actually love Tesla and love my FSD, but I'm very curious to see a future where Teslas are driving themselves around with no human supervision. That's a whole different conversation. Anyways, fundamental issue here is that LMs prioritize getting code to work over making it work well. And this functionality beats performance every single time when it's built by the AI. So now when I build uh, past companies, performance was everything because like, so for instance, when I built Clean Router, performance was absolutely everything. Clean Router is a router that filters internet for parents. And I've owned this company for a long time, but this is a great product that can help people to have content filtering in their homes in a simple way. But if it was slow, people threw it out the window. So making sure performance was absolutely top of mind in everything we did at Clean Router. Now, AI would have killed the, the, our competitive advantage here. So Microsoft is using AI for a reported 25% of their code generation and Google is for a reported 30%. And this means millions of lines of potentially suboptimal code. Now, as I've talked with insiders at Microsoft and Google, they say the majority of the code that's being generated is done for tests or boilerplate or framework code. A lot of the core systems do not have actual AI generated code into it. but they want to pump their stock value. I get it because that's what's doing it right now is these big AI numbers. Now, a lot of startups are bragging that 95% of their code is AI generated. Myself personally, I would never brag about this. We use the LLMs for very specific use cases as we build custom software for company, uh, for clients, but we do it in intelligent, reproducible and safe ways. LLMs can't benchmark their own code or verify actual performance improvements. They're essentially coding blind when it comes to optimizations. Most dangerous part is that performance problems often don't show up until you hit scale. By then it's too late to fix easily. Companies are unknowingly in creating systems that will require massive refactoring once performance problems become critical. The developers who understand performance optimizations are becoming even more valuable, not less. This is gonna continue to grow grow huge amounts of technical debt. Now, AI models are trained on code that works, not code that works fast. And there's a huge difference here. AI is not ranking that, right? They're not really doing the performance algorithm. They just wanna see if it works or compiles, but there's a massive difference between functional and optimal. LLMs lack the ability to understand real world context where code runs. So they under don't understand hardware constraint. They don't understand memory limitations. They don't understand network latency. Simple way to explain this is I heard recently of an AI agent that bought a whole bunch of Christmas trees in January because they were on a cheap price. Didn't understand that nobody wants a Christmas tree in January. Now, this is an example, right? Because performance optimizations de uh, requires deep understanding of algorithms, data structures, and system architecture that AI simply either doesn't possess or else can't bring into context into that specific spot. 
Now, when the code flash study proved that AI can't distinguish between code that looks better and code that actually performs better. So benchmarking and profiling requires running code in realistic conditions, something AI can't do during code generation. Human developers who master performance optimizations alongside AI tools for boilerplate are becoming incredibly powerful combinations. Let me restate that. If you're a developer, learn how to use AI to push it to help you performance optimize the code. Don't just take it right out of for yourself. But the best place that I see AI uh, accelerate is boilerplate, function by function, or code analysis, right? Now, AI-generated codes looks clean and functional in code reviews, but the performance problems are invisible until runtime. Most development teams don't have comprehensive performance testing in place to catch AI-generated performance regressions. The subtle bugs that AI introduces could sit in there and run in these infinite loops on your server, raising your cloud bill and causing you a bunch of overall slowdown in your product. So code review processes weren't designed to catch the types of optimization errors that AI can commonly uh, make, right? So companies need developers who understand both AI capabilities and performance profiling to understand and verify what AI is suggesting. So the integration challenge becomes exponentially harder when you're trying to optimize AI-generated code that interacts with existing high-performance systems. Now, if your company has systems that either aren't performing or aren't connected, reach out to us because our specialty is getting your company to work like a well-oiled machine. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer because we'd love to help you out. Now, code that works fine in development can become a performance bottleneck when it hits uh, production scale, right? You may run through code one time on your development machine and be like, sweet, I got this from AI and it works. Man, that saved me so much time. And then you put it into production and it sits there and just hammers your system. But AI has no concept of how code will perform under real user load, concurrent access, distributed systems, multi-threading, etc. right? You may generate the function that you're saying, yeah, that works. And then you stick it into something that's multi-threaded and it gets called 5,000 times in a day and suddenly your server bill bloats. The 62% bug rate in AI optimizations becomes catastrophic when those bugs hit production systems serving millions of users. Now I get it, you're like, I don't have millions of users. But even if you're hitting thousands of users, it can cause you some problems. Uh, and we're not even talking about security. We're just talking right now about performance. Performance problems compound. One slow AI generated function can create cascading delays throughout an entire system. Companies betting on all AI generated code are essentially conducting live performance experiments on their production systems. The most successful companies are those where experienced developers use AI to augment and enhance or as a starting, a starting point with boilerplate code or to use it to analyze their code. I love Cursor, I love GitHub Copilot, I love all the cool tools that are coming for developers. We should absolutely be using them. You should be building on top of LLMs. It's some cool tech, but you gotta know its limitations and you've gotta know that it's not gonna do it all for you nor is it gonna replace developers. So while competitors ship slow AI generated code, companies with strong performance engineering teams are building faster, more efficient uh, systems. So the skill gap between developers, uh, between those who, uh, those who are performing with AI and those who are not, or those who are just using AI to generate a whole bunch of uh, spaghetti code is going to become big quick. There's going to become an actual gap between the company's performance on the software that they build. Performance conscious developers are using AI to handle boilerplate code or to analyze code and help them find the things that they can fix, right? This is what AI is really good at. Hey, grab this, run the system, do some analysis on it. Come back, check it five, 10 minutes later, and you'd be like, oh, those are some great suggestions. I should go fix that now. Those are great use cases for AI. It's really good at that because it can look at a wide range of things really quickly but don't trust it to build that for you. That's where your expertise has to come in. So companies that invest in teaching their developers performance optimizations alongside AI tools are creating unstoppable competitive advantages. The market is rewarding systems that perform well under load and user experience directly correlates with business success. I know one of the biggest killers for a lot of SaaS products is how fast it can perform. So cross-functional skills that bridge AI capabilities with performance engineering are becoming a very valuable skill in tech. So a 5% performance improvement across a serv system serving millions of requests translates to massive cost savings and better user experience. The 75% of correct AI optimizations that provide minimal performance games are actually wasting developer time and adding complexity. And when you add complexity, that is going to cost you time over the years. You always want to write code like the person who is, has to manage it is a deranged psychopath. And honestly, the AI doesn't care if the deranged psychopath hates it or not. 
That's why you've got to make sure that you're doing your performance optimizations. Performance problems don't just settle down applications. They increase infrastructure costs. They reduce user satisfaction and hurt business metrics. When CleanRouter processed millions of different content filtering requests, every millisecond mattered for our customers' user experience. AI-generated code that prioritizes readability over performance creates hidden costs that can compound over time. So companies that understand and are doubling down on performance-focused developers, not replacing them with AI. Now, there's a t the tech hiring uh, is up uh, in, for people in AI-centered jobs, right? AI-reported jobs, jobs that are needing AI development, are up 40% year over year. I know a lot of people are showing numbers about how software development is down. Those are the generalized software development. People who know how to use AI, those jobs are up 40% year over year. So the hidden cost of running inefficient AI generated code at scale are starting to show up and the infrastructure bills are starting to pile up. And this is why you're seeing those job postings really start to, to grow. Companies are being incredibly picky about hiring because they need developers who understand both AI tools and performance optimizations. So the organizations that figure out how to combine AI productivity with human performance will dominate in their markets. Performance problems created by AI generated code require specialized knowledge to debug and to fix them, making experienced developers even more valuable. So this is where experience is so important. At Startup Hack, we actually have started a registered apprentice program. So if you're in Utah or Idaho and you're interested in a year-long registered apprentice program, we will pay training wages to train developers to come into our company so that we can put them into place into our various different projects. So reach out to startuphack.com slash jobs because we'd love to get you started if you're in Utah or Idaho. Now, AI can generate individual functions, but struggle with system-wide performance architecture that requires understanding of how data flows and bottlenecks. And that's why the most complex performance problems occur at the intersection of multiple systems. It's where these systems connect that can cause the most problems. Experienced developers who understand how to design performant architectures are becoming incredibly valuable as AI handles more routine coding. The integration challenge multiplies when you're trying to make AI-generated components work efficiently within high performance systems. So the big thing here is if you want to be able to stand out right now, you need to learn to effectively benchmark, profile and optimize AI generated code. And this is becoming a critical skill that dramatically increases developers market value. The gap between developers who can measure performance and those who can just hope AI suggestions work are creating a huge opportunity. Companies are discovering that AI augmented developers who understand performance optimizations deliver results that seemed impossible even just two years ago. Developers who master the combination of AI tools for productivity and human expertise for optimization are commanding huge salaries. So the early adopters of this performance-focused AI approach are already seeing a lot of demand for their skills. So the next phase of software development will be defined by developers who can leverage AI and use its productivity while maintaining performance excellence and know and understand the fundamentals. Traditional approach that ignore performance are becoming obsolete as AI makes functional code easy, but performance, uh, but performant code to become harder to come by. So it's becoming invaluable our developers who understand system thinking, performance optimization, and security to be able to validate AI generated code. Companies that combine these together are starting to look for people who have this expertise and those job postings we're seeing uh, AI related development job postings increase by 40% year over year right now. So I've never seen a bigger opportunity for software developers who understand both AI capabilities and performance engineering. The future belongs to those who take this for themselves. Now, what do, you, what do you guys think? What's your thoughts? I'd love to have a great discussion. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers and to build custom software solutions for companies. So reach out because we'd love to help. Hit the links down below or here's some great information about it and you can check out startuppack.com slash Spencer to get, this, to get help with us. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. 
From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet but exceed your strategic goals. Whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.